Welcome back on air with Chris Shanafell, and here we are Wednesday evening, uh, supposed to be Tuesday evening, uh, some technical technical difficulties got in the way. Anyways, here we are Wednesday evening about 6.20 p.m., and uh, the Chicago Bears got their first victory of the 2018 NFL season. I'm your host, Chris Shanafell, uh, presented by the NFL Draft Bible. Dot com and uh, here we are. The Bears are one and one uh, after two weeks into the NFL regular season. Uh, they should be two and zero oh, based off of uh, the, their their first two weeks. A, a game in which they were up twenty to zero against the Green Bay Packers. Packers at one point week one, and then uh, Monday night uh, they were able to finish the deal and uh, get a twenty four to seventeen victory. Against the Seattle Seahawks, who all week I and many others were uh, telling Chicago Bears fans around the nation that uh, this wasn't the same Seattle Seahawks team from two, three, four, five years ago. Um, and and uh, again, they got twenty-four to four, uh, twenty-four to seventeen victory at Soldier Field Monday Night Football. And to help discuss that game and all Chicago Bears is our good friend Aaron Lemming. From BearReport.com, from WindyCityUnderground.com, and uh, if you guys are familiar with the show, he's been on with us a number of different times. And again, Aaron joins the show now. Aaron, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. Uh, just uh, it's been kind of kind of nice to have a week where the Bears win. How about you? Oh, uh, absolutely, especially a Bears win in, in primetime football in, in Monday Night Football, where uh, you know, kind of all the NFL fan bases are paying attention to the Chicago Bears and their opponent. Here they are now, uh, able to get the victory Monday night football uh, against the Seattle Seahawks. Again, this isn't the same Seattle Seahawks from even a year ago. There's been a lot of turnover, been a lot of changes, especially to that defense. Uh, Eric Thomas just reported to the team uh, about uh, four or five days before the uh, regular season started. We know they're without Michael Bennett. They're without Richard Sherman and so on and so forth. This week, actually, this game, the second game of the season for the Seahawks, they're without um, two of their better defenders, arguably their best defender in linebacker Bobby Wagner. They're also without uh, linebacker K.J. Wright. Um, and just to make matters even better for the Bears, at least, it was Brian Urlacher night. They are honoring the Hall of Fame linebacker um, at halftime, which ESPN, we all know, dropped the ball. They did not show that ceremony at halftime, which uh, I, I have no idea how that happened. I mean, um, you know, just looking at a, a rivalry standpoint, the Green Bay Packers, I believe, showed, uh, 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 the network at least showed Brett Favre's Brett Favre night in which the Chicago Bears kind of uh, – interrupted with a victory that night on Thanksgiving a couple of years ago. And uh, uh, I believe they also showed Bart Starr night. Anyways, um, the Bears are 1-1, one and one, Aaron. Um, we could be looking back. They, 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 maybe they should be 2-0. and oh, But here in Chicago, Aaron, yes, the Bears are 1-1. One and one. Yes, they got a 24-17 victory at home against the Seattle Seahawks. Um but here I am, I'm listening to ESPN 1000, I'm listening to 670 The Score, I'm reading articles, and I'm reading fan comments, and um, if I didn't know any better, they'd be 0-2 just based off of the performance by Mitchell Trubisky, second-year quarterback. Um, yeah, he, he didn't have the greatest game, I, I mean, he threw for 200 yards, he threw two touchdowns, he threw two interceptions. Um, both of which were picked off by Seattle Seahawks cornerback uh, Shaquille Griffin. Um, but if I didn't know any better, they, they, they should be 0-2. Instead, they're 1-1 to start the season. They, they got a very winnable game, at least as of right now. That's how it looks against uh, on the road at Arizona, in which they're favored by 6.5 points, which, honestly, I don't know when the last time they've been favored on the road. Um you know, so so two and one is certainly in their future if all things work out. Um, I, I'm really surprised. Have you? I, I know you, you cover the Bears and you do a great job, Aaron, uh, especially on the West Coast. You, you know, you cover the team on the West Coast, and you, you have sources. You, you have a lot of um, 
you know, you, you, you bring a lot of insight from the West Coast. I mean, are you kind of getting the same feel? Are you surprised at all from how the fan base is kind of reacting after this Monday night victory against Seattle? I mean, again, if I didn't know any better, I mean, the Bears would be 0-2 right now instead of the 1-1 record that they are indeed. Well, you know, I, I try to be nice. Um, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, kind of kind of censor myself a little bit. But I'm not going to in this situation. I mean, obviously, it won't cost anything. But I, th- I think right now, Bears fans, radio hosts, media, whatever you want to call them, are conditioned for the Bears to be bad. They're conditioned for them to lose. They're conditioned for a three-win team, a five-win team, or a six-win team. Well, I got news. That's not the same team anymore. Uh, we, we saw what they did in the offseason. We saw who they added the head coach. We saw what they did in free agency. We saw what they did in the draft. We saw what they did with Khalil Mack. Okay, so I understand Mitchell Trubisky did not look good. He was very up and down. He hasn't looked good. I mean, there's just there's no other way around it. This is the 14th game that he started as an NFL quarterback. I understand that people are looking around and they're seeing, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson and Jimmy Garoppolo last year. And then they see Patrick Mahomes lighting up the world this year. The problem is, is quarterback development is not linear. It's just simply it's not linear. And people need to understand that because the, the situation that the Bears are in with Mitchell Trubisky going into his second year is not the same thing as Patrick Mahomes. It's not the same thing as Deshaun Watson last year. It's not the same thing as Jimmy Garoppolo. It just simply isn't. And, and the thing is, and it's always kind of cracked me up, is everybody last year, I can't believe the Bears didn't take Deshaun Watson. Why didn't they trade for Jimmy Garoppolo? Anybody chiming in about how they would rather have Deshaun Watson right now or that they'd rather have Jimmy Garoppolo or anything good about them because they've been very average, if not below average. And then all of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes is a hot-button topic here. Well, the, the, the situation's completely different, right? Patrick Mahomes was drafted knowing that he was going to sit in a good offense – with a coaching staff that was going to be there, with an offensive system that was still going to be there, regardless of what happened with Matt Nagy. He was going to sit back. He was going to develop. If he got some time, it was because Alex Smith either got hurt or, you know, like the 16th game of the season when they already had things wrapped up, and he came in and he started the game. He's had an entire year in that offensive system. He didn't have to deal with John Fox. He didn't have to deal with starting last year with your top receiver being Kendall Wright and your second best receiver being Dontrell Inman. Neither one of those guys are on teams right now. They don't they're all on NFL teams. So what you have right now with Mitchell Trubisky is you have a guy who has learned a, a second offense in just over a year's time. He had terrible development last year from John Fox. He had terrible development last year from Dow Loggins. John, they have to wash the John Fox out of him. It's just as simple as that. You can basically just picture him in a quarantine room with Matt Nagy right now, washing every bad thing that John Fox did to him last year. And it's going to take some time. He's in a brand new offense. He's had a few months to learn this thing. Uh, you know, like it or not, he didn't really play that much in the preseason. You know, people can criticize that. <clears throat> I've got news. I'm still sticking to it. 25 to 30 snaps in that game was not going to miraculously change how Mitchell Trubisky played starting. So I understand the angst. Uh, I understand that people see him. They say, well, why isn't he doing this? Why isn't he doing this? But there's multiple quarterbacks that you can go back and look through the years, so whether it be Alex Smith, whether it be Ben Roethlisberger, whether it be Matthew Stafford. There is multiple quarterbacks where it took time for them to gain traction. And I'm not saying that Mitchell Trubisky is going to be a great quarterback or even a good quarterback. What I'm simply saying right now is it's is way too early to tell. And I think one of the prime examples that you can really look back on, going back to Deshaun Watson and even Jimmy Garoppolo, but we'll focus on Watson, Watson had good receivers. He had a good offense. Uh, offensive line wasn't great. Uh, he played pretty dang good before he got injured. Um, but here's the thing. He hasn't played that well. He, I mean, his first game, he simply wasn't good. Last game, he was very, very average. Uh, through a bad interception that actually ended up costing them the game. Um, and they're 0-2 right now. So I think fans have to take a step back and realize that there's no film on Patrick Mahomes whatsoever. Defenses will adjust. We see that year in and year out with these quarterbacks. Deck Prescott is the prime example of why fans have to take a step back. Let development happen. Development is not linear. It's that you cannot compare this to the Patrick Mahomes situation. You cannot compare this to Deshaun Watson. It's a different situation. This is going to take time. The good news, and it's it's actually great news, is the fact that, like you said, the Bears should be 2-0. They have led 
Out of the 120 minutes that they played football this season, they have led for all but two minutes and 13 seconds of that. They played two of the best quarterbacks in the league. They're one and one. They're going in with a very winnable game this Sunday. And, I mean, it's just as simple as this. The Bears have an elite defense. I mean, it's just – it's that simple. They're getting sacks. They're getting turnovers. They're scoring touchdowns on defense. The Bears can afford to let this offense grow. Maybe it's not moving at the pace that everybody thought. It's not moving at the pace that I thought it was. But it's going to take time. They have the pieces. They have their core in place. This is a team that has flat out dominated for six out of the eight quarters. And that's something that fans need to realize. This is this team is going to do nothing but improve as long as the health as long as the health stays the same. And through two weeks, it has. I mean, they had one guy in the injury report, and that was a guy that broke his arm during practicing on a limited basis. Give it time. The fact that they're one and one, and they. Sh- fans should be celebrating right now this is probably the worst that we're going to see the team especially in offense and they should be 2-0 and right now everybody needs to take a step back off the <laughs> right now and it's going to do nothing but get better for them. absolutely and you mentioned the uh obviously the the comparisons between mahomes Trubisky, Deshaun Watson, obviously Watson was the guy to have last year. He was on a uh, rookie of the year type pace, even in the conversation of the MVP uh, of the league within the first four years when he was healthy last year, Aaron. And then this year, here's Deshaun Watson, uh, excuse me, uh, Patrick Mahomes, quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, just lighting it up the first two weeks of the NFL regular season. He has 10 touchdowns uh, the first two weeks. It's been the stat uh, to start the season, especially uh, the last couple of days. Um, 10 touchdowns, just as much as uh, uh, Mitchell Trubisky has had uh, throughout his young NFL career thus far. Um, And even Matt Nagy. uh, It it was uh, asked to him earlier in the week by Chicago reporters. Um, Even he has said, hey, Patrick Mahomes has been in that system now for a whole year, now going on to his second year. And uh, here's Mitchell Trubisky still learning this offensive system, still learning these new offensive pieces that are around him. Um, We know all the work that they've done throughout the offseason, whether it's uh, free agency with Allen Robinson, Trey Burton, Taylor Gabriel, um, adding Anthony Miller in the uh, NFL draft in the second round. Um, Patrick Mahomes, on the other hand, uh, he's been through an entire year of that offense. He he knows the Andy Reid offense up to this point. He's uh, certainly familiar with the pieces they have surrounded around him, whether it's Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, um, so on and so forth, the running back Kareem Hunt. Um, there's a bunch of turnover along with that new offensive system that Mitchell Trubisky has to deal with now. Um, and I think you're kind of in the same boat as I. I mean, this is just going to take time. Yeah, it's great to see guys like Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes kind of take off right away. But uh, that, that doesn't mean that Mitchell Trubisky is a, a bust. And sure, he was the number one quarterback selected in last year's draft class. But uh, we got to give this some time. Absolutely. It's just as simple as that. It, you know, I'm like, I'm like I keep going back to it. I'm not saying Trubisky is going to be good or even great. All I'm saying is it is way, way, way too early on to be able to tell and see what's going on. I mean, we have we have evidence in front of us that jumping the gun and jumping to a conclusion on even even the first year, you know, within a first year is, you know, worth of production is just simply not the right way to go about it. Dak Prescott's a prime example that he lit up the lit up the league in his rookie year. Everybody's, you know, freaking out, saying how great of a quarterback he is. You know, he's the best quarterback in this draft class and they got him in the later rounds and all this stuff. And then the next year all of a sudden, you know, Jared Goff and, and Carson Wentz lighted up and Dak Prescott was average. So far this year he's been average to below average. It's just it's just one of those things where once the league figures out a quarterback, then you start to see what goes on. And I understand that Trubisky may have not really he, – he really hasn't put together that one game where it's like, wow, you know, everything is there. You can see it. But he's put together pieces. He's had good games. He's had some bad games. He's had some bad moments, and he's had some good moments. But it is what it is at this point. And 
the Bears built this entire offseason around him. He's got four new targets that he hadn't thrown to before this year. He's got a brand new offense that he has to learn. I thought one of the nice things that we saw in, in, in the Seattle game this last week was the fact that he was able to make calls at the line of scrimmage. He checked out a thing. He was in command of the huddle. And one of the biggest things that really stood out to me, and it wasn't you know crazy, overly impressive like everybody's looking for with maybe somebody like Patrick Mahomes, is the fact that he threw two interceptions in the first half. First one, 100% on him. He underthrew a deep ball to Allen Robinson. He also missed another throw to Taylor Gabriel on the field that would have been a touchdown. This is all footwork. This is all footwork, and this is all him seeing the field. But the thing is, in that second interception, I'm not going to put on him. It was batted up in the air, and, and Griffin made a great play on it. But in the second half, he came out, and he ended up being 10 for 12, and I think he had like 83 or 88 yards, and he had the touchdown. This is his first two-touchdown game, obviously a little watered down by the fact that it was a two-interception game. But the entire point here is that he didn't get rattled. Matt Nagy didn't lose confidence in him and say, we're not going to throw the ball anymore. We're just going to run the ball. He kept it balanced. He showed his faith in his young quarterback. This is And this is the other thing that fans have to understand. This is the thing that everybody has to understand. The Kansas City Chiefs, if they were picking at number two, they would have taken Mitchell Trubisky. If they had their pick of all three quarterbacks, uh, they would have taken Mitchell Trubisky. So for everybody to sit here and act like Trubisky wasn't the top quarterback on most teams' boards is simply not true. I, you know, And you can debate whether the Bears should have tripped it up or whatever it may be, but most teams view Trubisky as the top quarterback. And I, I can tell you right now that once he gets his – you know, assuming he does, but once he gets his footwork figured out – Things are going to start coming together a lot more. Back, uh, obviously, he's going to start hitting, you know, throws down the field. But this is a process. And this is just a process that maybe is taking more time than we all thought, including myself. But it's something that is going to work itself out. Of time. I'm not saying he's going to do the same, same thing, but you know. But what I am saying is that the Bears have an elite defense right now. They have a Super Bowl caliber defense. If their offense is even average for more than half the year, they're probably going to make the playoffs. That's how good of a defense that they have right now. They have nice pieces everywhere, and it's just going to take some time. So I think, like I said, Bears fans need to enjoy this. This is the first time since 2014 of Week 4 that the Bears have been 500. I mean, just think about that. That's almost four years' worth of of a product that the Bears have put on the field where they, they they hadn't even been 500 at any point during their time. This is the first time since I think it was like week seven or week eight that they've been out of last place of the same year in 2014. Bears fans need to sit back and enjoy this. They have the core in place. You can see the talent on the field. You saw the talent on the field in Green Bay. And the, the, the coaching staff made very nice adjustments this game coming out of the second half. They didn't take their foot off the gas pedal. They didn't lose a the momentum. They came out. Their defense continued to play well. They went out and scored a touchdown. And they grasped what they needed to grasp, and they finished the game. This is a team that's a work in progress. This is a very new team. Staff that's going to take time. But once again, they were one play away from being 2-0. and And like you pointed out earlier, I mean, this is everybody's acting like they should, you know, they're 0 2 and that this season's doomed. They're right in the mix of everything. Place right now. We've got 14 games left to go with a very winnable game coming up and an early bye week to really get everything figured out. The Bears are in good position, especially if they win this weekend. There's a good chance that they're going to be, you know, right right in the mix for either, you know, the lead for the division or lead for a wild card. Obviously, it's early, but. Fans need to start acting like this is this team could actually be good. This isn't the the team that Brian Pace took over where he rebuilt the entire roster. This is a team ready to compete in a window. Maybe not for the Super Bowl but this year, but this is a team that can absolutely compete for the playoffs, and we've seen it. Yeah, I mean, hey, no doubt about it. And um, you know, the, again, there's still been a lot of questions. I mean, I, I'll tell you what, I, I work with a couple guys, and they're already calling for Chase Daniel if the backup quarterback isn't the most popular, the most loved player in all of Chicago sports, and I don't know who is. Um, again, these are guys that obviously don't know what the hell they're talking about, but um, you got to give this some time, especially, as Matt Nagy pointed out, this is Patrick Mahomes' second year working in this offense. Yes, he's doing great. Yes, he looks great. Um, you know, th- there's guys that are ready to anoint him to the Pro Football Hall of Fame already just two weeks in. But we have to give this some time. Um, again, Mitchell Trubisky isn't only working with uh, inside of a, a new offense, a new offensive uh, coaching staff, but it, uh, an entirely new offense 
um, offensive pieces as well with the receivers now. Um, obviously, running back Jordan Howard is still back there, and he uh, he had 14 carries for 35 yards. Uh, Tariq Cohen had four more carries for eight yards um, Monday night against Seattle. Um, that's a little bit down from what they had against uh, the Green Bay Packers uh, Sunday night at Lambeau Field, Aaron. Um, you know, that was something I was really looking forward to seeing more out of the, the running game. I thought that after Sunday night's game that they would kind of favor the run more than the pass. Um, I, I, I'm not saying that they did the wrong thing. Hey, they came out with a win regardless. But, but I would have still liked to see more of Jordan Howard uh, Monday night at home against Seattle. Were, were you surprised at all how how much they decided to go uh, pass instead of run uh, again? Mitchell Trubisky, twenty five of thirty four, um, still you know uh, what was uh, that 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 completion percentage was still where you would like to see it. Only in completed nine passes. Again, we we still seen uh, a little bit of uh, the. Uh, whether they're check down throws or, or screen passes or, or short passes inside, you know, three, four, five yards. Um, did you want to see a little bit more of Jordan Howard in this game like I did as well? I do, uh, and I think that that's something that needs to be an emphasis over the next few weeks because the Bears' passing game is struggling, uh, and it's something that I think, you know, we've been talking about. I think it's going to work itself out, but I think ultimately – one of the biggest ways that they can control the clock, and they've done a pretty good job of that. Don't get me wrong. I think part of that is just the fact that the defense is so good that, I mean, they just, they're, the amount of three and outs that they forced on two pretty good offenses overall has been pretty impressive. But I think that once they, they, they need to establish a run game. Matt Nagy talked about that today, and he basically said that, uh, you know, they, they never had really power in a rhythm, and that's something that they're going to look to do <clears throat> over the next few weeks. And I think that's something that they will do because, one thing that can really help out, uh, you know, a young quarterback. We've seen this with the Bears. We've seen uh, we've seen what a formula, uh, you know, a Lovey Smith formula for the time being can do, where you got a good running game and you got a, you know, an elite defense. How far that can take you, and I don't think that's going to be the case all year by any means. But I think that if they can establish a running game early on, and I think if they can put Trubisky in good situations on second and third down where they have, you know, it's a, you know, second or third and short uh, and and more manageable than some of what they have had the last few games, I think will definitely help. And I think that's definitely going to be a big part of the running game. And I think it'll end up coming together. Uh, I think the offensive line overall has played pretty decently well, especially at pass protection. But the one thing that has been somewhat concerning to me is just that they haven't been very good in the in the run game. They haven't really been opening up many lanes, and I think really the only way that that's going to can, you know start to happen and start to develop is giving Jordan Howard the ball more. I like Tariq Cohen. Uh, I think that you can use him in certain situations as a running back and uh, be pretty successful with it. But I do think that the Bears' running game starts and stops with Jordan Howard. I, I mean, he's just he is the guy. He's still I would, I would argue right now that he's still their best offensive player. Um, because, and, and especially with the, with his hands, I mean, he's caught every single pass that's been thrown to him, uh, you know, or at least catchable passes that have been thrown to him. So it's not like he's had any drops. So, I mean, he's still the best offensive player. And I think they'll get it figured out. I think Matt Nagy's been pretty creative. Uh, I think he was a little too creative uh, week one. I think he had a very good mix uh, this week. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But this is a team that should rush for 120, 130, 140 yards a game. Uh, but Jordan Howard still needs to be the focal point of that. Again, we're chatting with Aaron Lemming of BearReport.com, WindyCityGridiron.com. And, uh, you know, you mentioned Jordan Howard and his hands when it comes to catching the football. Um, that was obviously one of his uh, weak points last season. Worked on it this off season. Looked good in training camp. Wasn't sure how it was going to translate in preseason and regular season. But uh, so far, so good. Um, like you said, he had five receptions this past game. Looking on the defensive side of the ball, Aaron, um, Danny Trevathan, it was announced today, NFC uh, Defensive Player of the Week, um, eight tackles, led the team in tackles, two sacks, a tackle for loss, um, and a forced fumble. Um, him playing opposite side of Roquan Smith, who looked pretty good in his first game, starting for the Bears. Um, obviously, you said the best offensive player on the Bears, um, and, and I would agree with you, is Jordan Howard, running back. 
best defense player on the Bears, Khalil Mack, the, 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 the recently acquired pass rusher from the Oakland Raiders. Another great game, forced a fumble Monday night. Um, here was Danny Trevathan coming up big again, NFC Defense Player of the Week. Um, is this just a uh, formula or, or a recipe of having Khalil Mack on that Bears defense, how he's able to make um, not only the, the, the defensive line and the pass rushers better overall, but how he's able to make the entire team better overall as well. I mean, Danny Trevathan came in here, a very decorated uh, linebacker himself, um, Super Bowl champion from Denver. But, uh, I mean, is this kind of just a, a compliment as well um, from bringing Khalil Mack over from the Oakland Raiders? Absolutely. I, I think you look at, and, you know, we, we talked about this when when Khalil Mack happened <clears throat> and just everything that's gone on and, the, the fact is, and it's it's really simple. Uh, Khalil Mack makes all ten of the players on that field better when he's on, when he's playing, and I think we were starting to see that because I I think you could make an argument. I mean, obviously Khalil Mack Khalil Mack's the best player on the team. I don't think it's really that close at this point. I mean, he's the most impactful player on the entire team. Uh, obviously, you know, the defense, but I'd say the entire team. But you know, when you start looking at other players, let's just take Khalil Mack out of this. And in terms of who's benefiting from him, I would make an argument that Akeem Hicks probably had the the biggest benefit in Week One. And I think this week it was definitely Danny Trevathan. And I mean, just look at who was getting sacks. Uh, you know, they, they had ten sacks on the year, and what they've been able to do uh, because of his presence. I mean, if Khalil Mack's not getting sacks, forcing fumbles, or making tackles, uh, he's pressuring the quarterback or he's freeing other people to pressure the quarterback or you know, and in most cases lately, sacking the quarterback. So I think that you're going to see throughout the year, you're going to see kind of beneficiaries from his impact and how much better it makes the entire defense, right? So we looked at this coming into the season, a lot of Bears fans did, and I'm sure you did, and I know I did. And I'm looking at this defense, I'm saying, okay, they had a Roquan Smith, uh, but I've, I don't know what they're going to do at outside linebacker. I don't know how they're going to get to the quarterback consistently. Uh, they had a lot of sacks last year, but when you actually look at the pressure percentage, it wasn't nearly that good. It was it was bottom 10 in the league. So then you add a guy like Khalil Mack in the, in the mix, and you've got yourself a complete team, and we've seen that. And I, I just – it's it's hard to imagine – outside of injury, how this defense isn't going to continue to play at this level. Obviously, they're going to play good offenses where maybe, the, you know, they're not going to put up the, the crazy numbers, but there's not a quarterback that they I think that's going to be the consistency throughout the year, and I think what we're going to start seeing develop more and more consistently is the, the turnovers. I mean, they have four right now. They have two pick sixes, and they have the two forced fumbles, both coming from Matt. But I think we're going to get to a point where we're going to see consistent, you know, consistent interceptions because quarterbacks are going to start rushing and they're going to start making bad plays. I mean, we saw it with uh, with Prince of Mukamura. But I mean, this is just somebody. It and I, a lot of people thought maybe it was an exaggeration. But I mean, Khalil Mack took this team from okay, if they finish eight and eight, that's probably a pretty good product. To this is a this is a playoff type team. I'm not saying that they're going to make the playoffs for sure, but they absolutely have everything that they need to make the playoffs, even as is with the offense the way it is. They may not get very far, but this is a playoff-type team because of their defense, because of what Cleo Mack made them. They were top 10 defense in terms of numbers last year, and so far, I mean, Pro Football Focus, who I don't always agree with, uh, has them as the number one rated defense. I haven't looked at uh, Pro Football Outsiders uh, or Football Outsiders, uh, uh, their DVOA numbers or anything like that. But the Bears are top ten in a lot of categories right now, and I would make an argument that they're top five right now, uh, just as a whole, because there's been some garbage time stuff go on, and you know, so on and so forth. But Either way, I mean, as this offense gets better, the defense is only going to benefit more from that. And they're just, like I said, they're in a really good position. But I think a lot of this has to do with going out and making the move for Mac. I mean, this really, from an expectation standpoint for fans, it definitely changed. But from an impact on the field, I mean, they're just a completely different team. This this team just has a different feel. This doesn't feel like a team rebuilding that's just coming out of that. This this team feels like somebody who who has been there that is going to contend uh, that has good talent on the field. I think that's what we're seeing. And I think that was the expectation when the Bears made the big trade, giving up two first-round picks to acquire Khalil Mack. Um, I think it's coming into fruition, and I think it's um, even exceeded 
Bears fans' expectations, those who weren't very familiar with the style of play that came along with Khalil Mack, the, the type of player that he was. Um, you know, I'm not even going to lie to you, Aaron. I was pretty familiar with Khalil Mack. I knew he was one of the top pass rushers in the NFL. Um, as you said, he's kind of brought this not only defense up to another level, but kind of the expectations for this entire team to another level. Um, you being on the West Coast there in California, Aaron, did you know exactly what type of player the Bears were getting and how much of an immediate impact um, Khalil Mack would have on this team? Because I think overall here in Chicago, he's been a, a, a pretty uh, – it's been a, a pretty – it's been a surprise uh, from you know the, the love of defensive players, the history of defensive players and impactful players the Bears have had on defense, and then for this guy to come in you know seven eight days before the season opener to do what he did last week against the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field, um, and then to do what he did against Seattle uh, Monday night. I mean, for you being there in uh, in California around you know, maybe the, some of the Raiders fan base. Did you know exactly what type of player the Bears were getting when this trade was dealt? Yeah, I mean, I I have been able to watch a pretty good amount of Raiders games. I mean, living in California, you have quite a bit of, even in Southern California, you have quite a few uh, people around here that are that are Raiders fans because of when they're back in Los Angeles, you know. So it, what I will say, though, is I almost kind of think I might have undersold him. Uh, I knew he was a good player. I knew he was a top five defensive player. Uh, but I think you you've seen the the impact, and sometimes maybe it's a little hard to gauge that when you're not watching week in and week out. You look at numbers; he's, he's had good numbers. I, I don't think by any means they've been excellent in terms of when you're looking at like sacks or anything crazy like that. Uh, but when you look at the amount of pressures and run stops and all that stuff he's had, I mean, he's led the league over the last three years. And then you watch him play, and he he just it's actually amazing to me. I, this is what I'll say. Uh, I think the Bears have jumped up tremendously in the defensive department because of him being here. But I'm almost equally as shocked at the fact that the Raiders somehow never had a good defense with him there. And I think that just speaks to the lack of talent and the lack of awareness that the uh, the Raiders had. I mean, you have a generational talent like Khalil Mack who, for all intents and purposes, if he keeps on this this trail that he's on right now, is going to be a Hall of Famer. And he's probably going to go in, you know, obviously he'll have spent more time with the Bears than the Raiders. But, I mean, you're talking about uh, a perennial Hall of Famer here that's, that, that's going to happen uh, later on down the road. And the fact that he's had this big of an impact on the Bears' defense, but yet the Raiders have been, you know, an average to below average defense the entire time he's been in Oakland. I just, it, it's kind of mind blowing to me. It just kind of goes to show you how much John Gruden screwed up. I mean, his numbers alone, Khalil Mack's numbers alone are better than anything. The Raiders defense as a whole has done through two games this year. And it makes it even better that, uh, throughout the first two weeks in the NFL season, uh, you know, here we are, the Raiders are 0-2, and, and every post-game press conference, uh, John Gruden is complaining about the pass rush, and of course, the fact of trading Khalil Mack comes up each and every time, and, uh, you know, it, it almost seems like a, a funeral, it, it almost seems like a, a death when, uh, John Gruden has to bring up, uh, the, the trade of, uh, of Khalil Mack, uh, certainly on his way, if he keeps this up to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but here we are now, just the start of his Chicago Bears career, uh, obviously signed that six-year, $141 million deal, $90 million guaranteed. A um, few more questions, then we'll let you go, Aaron. Really do appreciate your time talking with Aaron Lemming, uh, at Aaron Lemming NFL on Twitter, uh, com- contributor of uh, WindyCityGridiron.com and BearReport.com. Next week, uh, Sunday, uh, they play the the Arizona Cardinals, the uh, three twenty five Eastern Time uh, game, uh, and they play uh, again. It's at Arizona, a team that has only scored um, six points this season. That six points came against the Washington Redskins Week One. They got shut out last week against a division rival, Los Angeles Rams, thirty four to zero. And this was a team that, heading into this week, um, there's been a lot of questions regarding the quarterback situation 
Will Sam Bradford, the, the, the one-year, $20 million quarterback that they signed in the offseason, hold on to that starting quarterback job, or will they thrust in the rookie quarterback, Josh Rosen, first-round pick out of UCLA, who um, on my draft board was the number one quarterback uh, in the NFL draft uh, this past season. Um, it, it looks as of now that Sam Bradford will hold on to that starting job for at least another week. Um, there's been a lot of questions, though, for their offense, not only for the quarterback job, but obviously they have one of the top running backs in the NFL with uh, David Johnson as well, who has been limited uh, early on to start the season within the first two weeks. Um, you know, you look at their receiving corps, you, you, you say there, there shouldn't be a problem there with Larry Fitzgerald, who's still playing like he's 28 years old. They drafted Christian Kirk in the second round out of Texas A&M. Um, they, they got a third round pick from last year, Chad, Chad Williams, who's, uh, a, a, a guy that they, they, they think highly of. I mean, this offense shouldn't really be, um, struggling as they are. Again, last week they played against one of the top defenses in the NFL, the, the, the Los Angeles Rams. The previous week, they only scored six points against the uh, Washington Redskins. Um, yeah, the offensive line is a big question, but, uh, you know, it, it, is this an offense that really should, um, uh, at least in my opinion, I don't think this is an offense that should struggle or, or that should struggle as much as they should have. And um, honestly, I, I think they're making the right move by staying with Sam Bradford for another week. Don't throw the rookie Josh Rosen into this Bears defense that has uh, pass rush galore with Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack. Um, hopefully, Leonard Floyd gets something going on. If not, they could get something out of the Bears uh, linebackers, Danny Trevathan, uh, Roquan Smith. I think they're making the right decision by not throwing Josh Rosen out there this weekend. But uh, it, do, at least for you, Aaron, is this Cardinals team really as bad as uh, they looked the first two weeks in? Well, I was <clears throat> I didn't watch uh, the full game week one. I saw a little bit of it, and then I saw a pretty good amount of the game last week, and they're pretty bad. I mean, it's just really all there is to it. I mean, they couldn't get a thing going on offense last week, and even the week before they made – Redskins look like world beaters, and then the Redskins come out and they lose to the the Colts, and really wasn't even that close of a game. So, yeah, I think uh, there's a, there's a lot of questions here. Um, I, I think when you look at the you know Arizona as a whole, uh, when when Bruce Arians retired, I looked at that team and said this is this is a team that's going to be in for a serious rebuild. Sam Bradford wasn't very good with Minnesota last year when he played. Um, I mean, remember that game uh, against the Bears on Monday Night Football when it was Trubisky's debut? I mean, he looked awful. He's just he's not the same quarterback that he once was. Uh, and you look at their defense, and their defense is just being absolutely overwhelmed right now uh, because of how bad their offense is. They they don't even know how to use uh, they don't even know how to use David Johnson right right now. I mean, they have some offensive firepower. But it's hard for me to see this 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 Cardinals team as a whole doing anything to the Bears, especially on offense, when you look at how dominant the Bears have been over the last two weeks against very good offenses, or at least I should say very good quarterbacks and uh, very good offense in Green Bay. Um, and then you look at what they're going to, you know, are they really going to be able to do anything against the Bears? I, I don't think so. And I think that uh, Sam Bradford is probably going to be running for his life. I think it would be an absolutely terrible decision to start Josh Rosen uh, this week. And I don't think they're going to. Everything I've read is saying that they're they're not going to. So it's, I mean, this this is a very favorable matchup for the Bears. Uh, six and a half point line on the road. Uh, should show you all you need to. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we know what happened last year when Sam Bradford was on the Minnesota Vikings against the Chicago Bears, uh, Mitchell Trubisky's uh, first career NFL start, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bears defense got after him pretty pretty badly, and uh, you know he, he actually ended up uh, getting pulled from that game with another knee injury. And uh, here the Arizona Cardinals are throwing another $20 million at him for uh, a one-year deal. Uh, you know, it's kind of not win, but more so if the Chicago Bears... Uh, or ex excuse me, the uh, Arizona Cardinals will be uh, starting Josh Rosen. Again, it doesn't look like it will be this weekend, uh, maybe uh, in the near future, though. Um, so, uh, again, another Bear, or, or, or the first Bears victory against the Seattle Seahawks, 24-17. Uh, to 17. It was nice to get that under the belt. Next, uh, next week, or, or this uh, coming Sunday, 
Uh, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Um, Aaron, really appreciate your time. Again, you can follow Aaron on Twitter, at Aaron Lemming NFL. Uh, check out his work, BearReport.com and uh, WindyCityGridiron.com. Uh, as always, Aaron, thank you very much for your time, and uh, hopefully we can chat with you again soon. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me on. I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.